everybody. I'm so excited to be here for this huddle call this morning, Wednesday, July 19th. Um, before we get into it, I want you to give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Perfect. That's good. And then go ahead and get into your chats, your uh, message threads, wherever you are with your teams, and let them know that we are on and to hop on. And while you do that, I'm going to make some announcements, some fun things that are happening in the community, something that just dropped today. Happy Wednesday. Yes, talk to me in the chat. I love it. Actually, let me pull up the chat while you guys are chatting with your teams. And um, so some announcements that we have as a private community to be aware of. Number one, if you have not checked your Pulse app today, definitely go in and do it. There's some cool visuals on um, the new flavor. It's kind of an old flavor, actually, if you've been here for a long time. It's called Tangerine Dragon. It's an unleashed version of our ketones. Absolutely love it. And it dropped today for VIP customers. So actually, each time I lead a call, and I'll get to who I am in a second, but each time I lead a call, I like to tell people that like leave a section if you're taking notes, leave a section for notes and then leave a section for actions. Uh, Cause I like to give actions while we're speaking or assignments if you'd like to call it that. Uh, and one of the actions is if you have VIP customers, reach out to them and let them know of this deal. Don't just post and pray. Um, they can get anywhere from 15 to 50% off. And this is not going to be a training on how to introduce uh, new flavor drops um, or explain any of that, definitely reach out to your team, your helpline, and uh, ask them for specifics if you need it. But that's an action step that we can do today. Uh, number two, Playbook in Dallas, August 11th. I am so excited. It is, it is at 50% capacity. So we've sold through about 50% of the tickets that are only $37 until the end of the month, y'all. So make sure to grab a Dallas Playbook ticket um, August 11th, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, ask your team for sure. It will sell out. I know that it will sell out. And then after July 31st, the ticket prices go up to $47, which are still super cheap, but hello, get some for 37, even if you don't know if you can get there. That's what I did. I bought a ticket for $37, didn't know how I was going to arrive, but I'm going to arrive, right? Um, playbook is really cool for your business. It's super phenomenal because think if you think of your business like a game and like, I don't know if you're a football player or something, they have like a playbook, right? It's the same thing for our business and the football players can look at the playbook or whatever they wear, wherever they wear it. And it's like, go there, do this, tackle this person, throw that way. Legit action steps, the plays that work. That's what playbook is for our community. So if there is any way that you can get there, I have a local promoter driving 20 hours to get there, guys. <laughs> so do you have the great determination to get there? Um, and then lastly, tonight we have a guest call. Um, oh, if you need the link to purchase the tickets for the Dallas Playbook event, it's ketonesourlife.com. If somebody wants to type that in the chat, that would be awesome. And then we have a guest call for educators tonight. I thought that was the coolest thing. So when you think about educators, uh, guest call, uh, invite. So what are we going to do with this, right? We're going to invite people who may or may not have tried ketones before who are in the space of education. We could, that could be teachers. Hello, nurses are educators, honestly. <laughs> Um, educators go beyond the title of teacher. So just uh, think about an action that you could take today to invite anyone in your world to hop on the guest call tonight. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be great. Awesome. See the chat for some great, great details. Super amazing. So now we're going to officially start the training for today. Um, and if you are that note taker and you're able to, to jot down, if you're not writing, Paula, I see, or dri uh, driving, Paula, I see that you're driving. Don't take notes. <laughs> the title for today is Activity Creates Opportunity. Activity Creates Opportunity. And by opportunity, I mean conversations to invite people to try ketones, yes, that's the opportunity I'm talking about. Super simple, super basic. 
So if you're new here, this might be some like an aha moment for you. Uh, it could be great new information. If you're a veteran here, you've been around for quite some time. Lisa, I'm definitely going to get to that. But when when uh, if you've been here for quite some time, this might be a great reminder for you or a little swift punch in the gut if you've been around here for a long time, uh, some of the things that we're going to talk about today. So as Lisa told me in the chat to introduce myself, that's what I was going to do next. <laughs> uh, my name is Jenna. Yes, tell me where you are watching from in the chat. My name is Jenna. I have been drinking and sharing ketones for just a little bit over five years. I live in a, what I thought was a small town in West Virginia. It's growing rapidly. Um, and I have two friends who are going to share with me today also, Kate from Connecticut and Tessa from Georgia a little bit later. And they're going to share their experience about what happens when uh, they're in activity and what happens when they're not in activity. Awesome. I love all the places that we're representing in the chat, y'all. It is so cool. So before we get into what I really want to open our eyes to today in regards to our activity, our activity in our business every day is this phrase. I'm going to call out a phrase that I have a love-hate relationship with. We've all heard it, and it's this. When opportunity knocks, or when the opportunity comes knocking, right? Everybody's heard that phrase, something about opportunity knocking. The reason I have a love-hate relationship with it is because, number one, I love it because, sure, if opportunity comes knocking, we should be ready, right? Our eyes and our ears should be open for opportunity if it comes knocking. But the reason I have the hate part uh, of a relationship with this phrase is because nine out of 10 times, opportunity is not going to come knocking. There are things that we can do to make sure that we're creating. So number one, if you're taking notes, we can create opportunity for ourselves. We don't always have to be like sitting ducks waiting for opportunity to come. It's typically not going to happen that way, right? We can create opportunity for ourselves. So how do we do that? There's two things that I would like to touch on today. Number one, we must create the space for it. We must create the space for it. Number two, we must actually usher it in. So we must usher it in. And what I want to talk about with each of these um, points here is that when I, when I say, let's make sure we're creating a space for opportunity to walk in, it's our environment. It's our safe space. It's managing your energy. Kate had did a great job on Monday, leading our huddle call Monday, talking about how to manage our energy and giving us action steps, things that we could do uh, to make sure that if we feel our energy dipping, okay, how can we correct this so that we can create a space of, hmm, this is an inviting space. My energy is okay to have incredible, powerful conversations today. Because remember, the opportunity that we're talking about here are conversations with people. So how is your energy? Um, how are you? What is your attraction like? If you were on LCD, do you have it? What are you magnetizing? How is your magnetism? That's creating a space. What activities are you doing in that space to make sure that it's a safe space for people to approach or to bring people into? And the number two, what do I mean when I say usher it in, right? Uh, when we're ushering opportunity in. So ask yourself the question, what opportunities are you doing to take a conversation that you're having, right? And literally think of yourself as an usher. You, you have, you know, you take somebody by the arm and you're ushering them to the seat that you want them to sit in if you're an event or you're directing people where to go, think of like ushering people into wherever. So if it's a conversation, 
How do I lead and direct the conversation and usher it to where I want it to go, the outcome I'm looking for out of the conversation? And guys, the outcome that we're looking for as prove it promoters is either a yes, I want to try ketones or join your business or no, I don't want to. We're looking for a yes or a no. It does not have to be a yes in order for the outcome that we're looking for, right? So let's take a moment just to, to hear what I actually said right there. The outcome isn't, I need everyone to say yes. The outcome is I'm going for a yes or a no. And the only way that I can get there is if I create the space for the conversation to happen and then direct the conversation, usher it to where I want to go, which is the ask, the power of the ask, right? So next, I want to give you an example of how this looks and in my story, how I started Prove It. It's actually hilarious um, because <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you why. You'll see when I tell it. But as I tell you the story as about how I got started and how long it took me to say yes. I want you guys to pick out was an environment created for me to be safe, to have the opportunity conversation. Did the person who enrolled me in Prove It create a space appropriately? Not that it was, that there's an inappropriate way. I don't believe that you can say the right thing to the wrong person or the wrong thing to the right person. So let me just clarify there. And number two, did she um, usher me, did she give me directions like an usher would to where she wanted the conversation to go? So are we ready? Okay. Yes, we're ready. All right. Number one, I'm an RN by trade. I was a mother to a newborn baby girl. My son had just been diagnosed at two and a half years old with epilepsy. So picture me working two full-time nursing jobs, exhausted and worried about my children, right? Um, I had no motivation to do anything except wake up and put one foot in front of the other and just make sure that everybody was alive. That was where I was. I, was, I had brain debilitating brain fog. And quite frankly, I was just walking around extremely sad and extremely defeated. I could use, I'm, I'm going to stay compliant. I'm not going to use a medical term that I could use there, but just think of somebody who's extremely sad and feeling defeated all the time. That was me. That was five years ago. I watched some random chick on Facebook live, do a live video. And so if you're taking notes and you're trying to pinpoint, did she create a space for the opportunity for a conversation to arise? Yes, she did. She went live. That could be your space. That could be the space that she created or that you create. It could look different, but for my story, Stephanie Milkey is the, the random chick, by the way. She went live and her title um, drew me in. She created a space that I wanted to be a part of with her title and then her energy of her live video. Yes, Samantha Rose, and look at you now. By the way, my maiden name is Rose. And so I am really salty over here that you get to have that last name and I don't. <laughs> anyway, um, I tried to get my husband to take it and he said no, but it's fine. Gainey, Jenna Gainey is, is perfect. <laughs> anyway, so she said a couple of things in her live video that made me feel safe there. Made me feel like I related to her. She was a homeschool mom. She lived in two places, which is my dream to live in one place, six months, another place, another six months. And she held up a packet of ketones very quickly and was like, and we drink these uh, for mental clarity and focus for the family to be able to, to go on and, and stay focused and do what we need to do throughout the day. First of all, I thought I passed out and died because I couldn't believe that there was a supplement that could put you in ketosis. So I was skeptical, right? But the next thing she said or the next thing she did was told me what she wanted me to do. If I want, and all the other viewers, if I wanted information about the packet, she told me to comment, comment below. And not only did she tell me to comment, she told me to comment a certain word. 
So was that the ushering part? Did she literally take me by the arm and usher me in through her live video? She didn't even know I was watching and say, hey, you want information? Comment and comment this. I'll reach out to you. So yes, she did both of those things. She created a space for me to step into. And she, she ushered, she uh, tailored or ushered the conversation to where she wanted it to end. Now, here is what I think is the most important part about this entire story. I asked her for information and then I ghosted her and even told her no for two months. <laughs> I'm gonna say it again for those of you who, who uh, missed it. I was the one who asked her for information and then I ghosted her. She sent me messages probably every two weeks following up with me. Had she not, I would not be here. My life would not look the way that it does. My life looks completely different. The time freedom that I thought was not obtainable, I got, right? The uh, full-time income while working from home in, I'm in my bathing suit, y'all. Like this wouldn't be happening if she wouldn't have continued to follow up. So who in your organization is waiting for you to follow up with them? Who has told you no? So here's an action. If you're, you're making notes, the action is Stephanie said, I followed up for five months. Really? It was that long. <gasps> Crazy. I just remember being in conversation with her for two months or three saying, no, I don't have time for this. I told you my story. I have a newborn. I uh, have a now a new epileptic son. I'm working two jobs. My husband was working night shift. Absolutely not. I'm not looking at the link that you sent. Those were my thoughts. But she kept following up. So in your action steps, who has told you no a couple times or you think has ghosted you, you feel a certain type of way and say you stopped asking them questions. I think today is the day. Maybe you can do it tomorrow if you're busy that you get into their inbox with love and compassion and be like, I am sure you are so busy, but I have to make sure that you saw my above message. Mm -hmm. She just kept in my inbox. So when I decided to try ketones, hello, they worked. It was amazing. My brain fog lifted. I felt like I cried because I felt 17 again um, and I couldn't believe it. But I also told myself, I'm not going, I, you know, I, we don't have an extra penny. I'm not going to put, I can't afford these ketones. So I'm going to try to make this a business. So next most important part was I determined to prove that this wasn't going to work as a business. I was determined to prove that it wasn't going to work. So what I told myself was this, Jenna Ganey, you don't have time to waste your time. So you better give it your all all the energy, all the effort, all the excitement, hair on fire, Mach 10 for 30 days. And then you can quit when it doesn't work. I didn't think the business was going to work, but I wanted to at least have enough ketones for us for a little bit. So um, the funny thing is when you work, things actually work. When you're doing the activity, yes, drop it. I see you clapping the iPhone. I don't know what your name is, but thank you for that energy. Woo! Yes. When you work, it works, which takes me back to the whole point of this training. What opportunity or what activities are you doing to create opportunity for those first 30 days? Because I knew there was an MV period and I wanted to hit it. I wanted that $500, right? I did nothing but talk to people for 30 days, mock 10, hair on fire. So duh, it worked. Duh, it worked. And I got that bonus and I got a paycheck that was similar to my nursing paycheck. Absolutely ridiculous. How, how funny that is. So a question to ask yourself is, what activity are you doing now? What activity were you doing then? What activity do you want to do? Self-assess. I think that's the best tool that we could ever have. And one thing, I want to pause here and say is the last thing I want you to do about this activity that we're speaking about today, and I will give you some actions that you should be doing every single day, in my opinion. Um, the last thing I want you to do is overwhelm yourself. Need not be overwhelmed because if you're overwhelmed, you're going to overanalyze. You're not going to do anything at all. So everybody close your eyes and take a deep breath. 
Don't watch my face. Take a deep breath. And if you're feeling the overwhelm, keep, keep your eyes closed, keep deep breathing. If you're feeling the overwhelm, I want you to release it and let it go. Do that for about 10 seconds. Deep breathe, release it and let it go. Please remind yourself, you can open your eyes if you want, but please remind yourself that your only job in this business is to stay in activity, simple activity, to stay in motion. Science nerd, RN coming out, here's a warning. Do y'all remember Newton and like his laws of motion in school? If you don't, it's okay, because I'm gonna tell you his first law. His first law of motion is this, an object at rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion. Are you at rest or are you moving? Ooh, speaking your language. An object at rest stays at rest. An object in motion stays in motion. So I want to prove Newton's law, number one, through a story of my friend Kate. Um, before and, and after this, we'll give you some actionable daily steps. Um, but Kate is going to prove to us how Newton's law is so true. At, at, and, uh, if you're at rest, you stay at rest. If you're in activity, you stay in activity. So Kate, can you unmute yourself and tell us where you're from, first of all, and how long you've been loving ketones? I just saw her face and then it went away. I wonder if she accidentally hit a wrong button. So she has a really powerful story. I'll talk until we figure that out. Um, she has I got a really, it. Oh, she got it. Yay. Okay. Sorry. Hi. I hit something and then my unmute button disappeared and I started to panic. <laughs> but hi, everyone. I'm Kate. I'm from Connecticut. I've been drinking and sharing ketones for about three years now. And I did just go through a season as we all do where I've been kind of on the sidelines uh, but I was chatting with Jenna and I wanted to tell you guys this story of what happened the other day um, and excuse my squinty face I came out here to hide from my kids while my mom watches them I can't see anything <laughs> so I'm driving home in my car the other day and everything's fine and all of a sudden the check engine light the battery light everything starts flashing there's all these crazy bells and whistles going off in my car and i'm like holy moly what's going on so i start to panic a little bit but i stay calm and i see it come up on my dash engine overheating turn off car or turn off engine whatever it says and i'm like okay i got this pulled over turned the car off called my husband, sat there for a little while, waited for it to cool off and stayed calm, started it up. And luckily I was only like a mile and a half or so from my house, was able to get home. Relating this back to business, say the check engine light is a promoter that said that they were gonna sign up and decided not to, or the battery light was somebody canceled their smart ship order or all the bells and whistles going off, beeping and alerting me was the person who keeps calling you and that doesn't want coaching, that just wants to vent constantly and is downing all of your energy levels. If you're focused on that promoter, that smart ship, the bells and whistles, all the negativity, I would totally miss the fact that I have to pull over and turn my car off and then I wouldn't get to where I wanted to go. I wanted to go home. If I was focused on all of that stuff, I would have totally missed the message that my car was clearly telling me. And you could be missing something in your business that is a simple action step, like Jenna telling me to do things. And I could be overwhelmed and focused on like, people keep canceling their smart ships and I can't control and I don't know what to do, which I can't control it, but I could keep taking the actions every day and keep propelling myself forward and get where I wanted to go. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. That is so good. And I have a question if that's okay. 
Yes. So as related to this topic and business, when you are focusing on your simple activity, like, or how about this? Let me ask you this one. When your activity began to slow and you weren't focusing where you should have focused, for example, I hate using that word should, but when your activity began to slow, what happened to your business? Oh, it went downhill. It slowed, right? Right. <laughs> so, and then what happened to your business recently when you started increasing your activity? Like, what has happened recently when you put that what? action back onto Facebook, basically? Obviously, as you know, I went and saw you for LCD, and I was posting. Everybody was posting about LCD. There's super high energy, so much love being around the community. And next thing you know, boom. I'm in a promoter conversation, like without even leaving that weekend. And I've had multiple different messages. You were just touching on um, talking to people in your network that maybe you haven't reached out to or, you know, that you haven't heard from in a while. All these people are coming back to me <laughs> and, and sending me messages. I was just chatting with somebody and trying to help them reset up their smart ship and help them through that. And it's just amazing. Like if you take the action, then it starts to, to work. Mic drop guys. She did not do anything miraculous. She put one post about energy up on social media after not putting many posts at all. Like the, the biggest takeaway, I hope that many of you get from this. Thank you, Kate, for sharing. Love you. Welcome. Um, <laughs> the, what I want you to get from this is that it's simple activity, right? Sometimes we get into analysis paralysis because we're overthinking or we're trying to be perfectionist. And then we don't do anything at all. You have no idea who's going to be available to step into that safe space for you to usher them into where you want to go uh, if you're not posting. Okay. So as promised, I'm going to give you some activities that I believe are important for us to do every day. And if you have a killer activity list, a daily activity list, we call them DMOs. I would love for you, if they're copy and pasteable, for you to just type some in the chat. Because what I might be saying here, maybe it doesn't drive with you. Maybe one or two things does. But what if somebody in the chat posts something that you're like, oh my gosh, mind blown. Can't believe I haven't been doing that. That is so me. I need to do that. So if you're a veteran here or you have a really killer uh, DMO list, please add it in the chat while I'm speaking about this. Um, because the last thing that we, uh, the, the thing that we cannot do in our business is hope, wish, dream, pray, post and pray right? We say that all the time. We actually have to do the activity for the opportunities to flow to us. I don't think I could say that one more time. I feel like I'm, uh, you know, beating a dead horse. Um, but one activity that I believe is a non-negotiable every single day in our business is having a goal. I love that Kelly, having a goal of X amount of new people to talk to every day. If you have this goal, awesome. If you need to revisit this goal, even better. If you don't have this goal, I would set it. So talk to how many people every single day, either new people or people who uh, you can talk to and see if they can refer friends. And does this scare anybody like setting a number? Anybody? Everybody is like not scared. Okay, yeah, it, it scares me too, still to this day. So how do you, let's say you set a goal to talk to five people. How in the world do you talk to those people? How do you find them? What do you do, right? Number one, follow up with people who have said yes, but maybe they haven't actually bought anything. Follow up with people who have said no. That was me, guys. I said no a hundred times. So Follow up with people. I hope you have like a book of names or something, or you have, I don't know if you're an Excel spreadsheet person, but where are you keeping track of the people who you've talked to about ketones and it goes nowhere? Follow up with them. Ask a friend or a customer if they can refer friends to you. You're talking to them and then you're about to talk to their friends. This is how you find new people to chat with uh, or, or uh, bring to life dead conversations. Let your friend know. Did you know that as a customer, you have coupons to share? with your friends, put me in a three-way chat with them. Okay. How else might we be able to talk to new people every day? Um, invite them to our guest calls. Again, there's one at 8 PM tonight for educators. Knowing your schedule as a private promoter or knowing our private schedule is very helpful here. 
We have guest calls every Monday and Wednesday evenings. We have a reboot schedule. Currently, we have a summer slim down schedule. Make sure to tap in and make sure you're seeing our calendar. Make sure you're seeing or knowing our schedule so that you can set your week up for success and your business up for success by knowing what I want to invite to that's happening next month or next week. So inviting them in person, inviting them on social media, whatever it is that you want to do. And this next one, I'm going to have Tessa hop on and give a, a kind of like an aha. We were talking earlier this morning and she, I had an aha moment when we were speaking. This one's really big. Another way that you can find new people to talk to is go to your stories. If you post on your stories and see who watches you every single day and says nothing, the silent watchers and ask them, Hey, are you interested in the ketones that I share or what interests you the most about my stories every day? I see that you watch them. I love it. Thank you so much for your support. What questions do you have about my lifestyle or whatever? But here's the kicker. If you're going to ask them about ketones or the opportunity to join your business, eventually you have to be posting about ketones in your story. So Tessa, will you unmute and uh, give us kind of like the aha you had about the activity producing opportunity and what are some things that we can post in our story as actions even today you should have the ability oh no it's tessa bailey christina if you can make her a co-host so she can unmute and while that's working out it's kinks you can spell her name t-s-s-a-b-a-i-l-e-y um, some other things that, that you can do to talk to new people while they're trying to get this unmuted is talk to your grocery store clerks, talk to your bank tellers, talk to people in passing, right? If you are making small talk with these people, you're going to figure out, okay, Tessa, you're going to figure out who you might want to work with. You're going to figure out who needs to try ketones, right? Okay. It looks like Tessa can come on. So I'll circle back around to that in just a sec. Hey, you guys, my name is Tessa and I'm from Georgia. And guess what? I am an educator and all educators, everybody needs ketones, but especially educators. Okay. This morning, who snagged, this is not the dragon one, but who snagged their black label? This saved me today. If you haven't gotten some, get you some. Because guess what? I got a call a week ago saying that I'm not in kindergarten anymore. I'm in fourth grade. So I moved the whole classroom this morning. Teachers need ketones. Okay. Okay. All right. So down to business. Let's get down to business. All right. So of course my child enters as we're getting down to business. Anyway, so stories, what I have noticed is when I am consistent in my stories with more than one thing, not just posting my ketones, but with basically let's call them slides. When I am consistent posting these three slides in my stories every single day, it is easier to allow that space that Jenna was talking about to be confident in yourself, to reach out to people and for people to be confident reaching out to you because they trust you. They see that you're truly doing this every single day. So when I am not doing this, I can tell you, you know, she said earlier, pick a number of how many new people you want to talk to when I am not consistently posting these three slides in my stories, I find myself hesitating to reach out because I feel like I'm sending that cold salesy message. Whereas when I am consistent, it's easier to see their story and be like, Hey, I saw that you were exhausted today. I have some Something that can help with it. I don't know if you've seen my stories and what I drink every day, but I have something that could help if you want to know about it. Like it's so much easier to have that connection with a person when you're being consistent with yourself, because as Ed Milet says, when you are consistent with yourself, you are building your own confidence. So the more you do this, the more confidence you have in yourself. And then it doesn't feel like you're sending cold messages. You know, you know, this person already, you know, 
the teacher who is tired. You know the person who works in their yard all day and could use some extra energy. You know the friend down the street who maybe has sore muscles or is trying to build muscles. Like you know these things, right? The beautiful thing about stories versus posts is, you know, I mean, raise your hand if you post your stories. I hope you do. Here's the thing. I would say on average, I post like 10 things in my stories a day on average. I don't really know. But if three of those things are about ketones, then you're not that person who has a sales page on your Facebook anymore. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't feel like that. Instead, you're just popping this in there little by little, just sprinkling it in. And then when you reach out to them again and you're like, hey, I saw you had all that laundry to conquer. Did you get it done? No, I got too tired. I didn't finish. I have something that can help with that. And then you're like, and they're like, oh, well, I've seen you post that in your story. I meant to ask you, you know what I'm saying? It just makes it so much easier. So I challenge you to use your story to your advantage. Um, Because again, you know, maybe someone has Sunday night to scroll on their stories. So if you're doing it every day, they didn't see it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They only saw it that one day, right? Or if they scroll every day, then they're like, golly, this girl is killing these ketones. What are these things? You know what I'm saying? So my challenge to you is to do three slides. Is that what we're calling it? Slides on your story. Your first one is your shakeup, whatever that looks like for you. If that's a time lapse, if it's you talking about your day while you're shaking it up, if it's just a picture of your shaker bottle, whatever it is, there's slide one. You did it. You're boom shakalaka. You got this. Slide two is some sort of fact about ketones, whether it's maybe the first one, you just did your shaker bottle. Cool. Slide two. It's like, thank goodness I have these ketones because I'm going to be in the yard all day, blah, blah, blah. Or like today mine was thank goodness for these ketones because I have to set up a whole classroom in two hours. Okay. So just something that speaks on the benefits. Now this could be a good time where you use one of those flyers that we have, or like if you have someone on your team, who's great with Canva, just one of those beautiful, just the benefits, fat loss, muscle pres- preservation, sleep, skin, mood, energy, focus, seven words. That's all you need. Something about the benefits though, right? The more personal you make it for yourself, I think the better that when we reach people, right? Cause if we only speak on one benefit, then they only know about one. So even each day you could be like, Ooh, today I need, this for my workout tomorrow. I need it for the garden. As you guys can tell, I've been in my garden like all week, but anyway, and then slide three is a call to action. And this can look like a couple of different things like, Hey, who's ready for a trial pack? You can, you can have a picture of your trial pack. Um, or Hey, who wants to know more about this? We have a guest call tonight. Something that is interactive, whether you put a poll on it or you just say, make sure you DM me if you want some information again, It's just three slides. Now you're not just doing three slides throughout the day, right? Because you're going to post about your life, what you're eating, all these things. That's the beauty of stories. It's not this elaborate thing. I have seen people in our private community who do an incredible job. You know, they'll do those three things and then they'll talk about it a little bit too. If you're feeling frisky, you know, you can add that to the mix. That makes my pits sweat. So I'm going to stick to the three and make sure I get consistent on these three And then maybe we'll add some more. So my challenge to you is to do those three slides. Oh, Jenna, just put it in there. Shake it up, some facts and a call to action. And that can look like whatever you want it to look like. But I promise you, I try. But when you do this, I promise you, A, you're going to build your confidence. And then B, when you go to reach out to that person, it's going to be so much easier because you're putting, you're putting that energy out there. You're creating that safe space. Tessa, Tessa, you are so amazing. I love it. I heard that she created the safe space and then she ushered that lady who was tired doing her laundry into the, you should try ketones conversation. Okay, guys, it is as simple as that. And these daily action steps, there are things that you can do outside of your day, um, but daily. For newbies and oldies, right? I don't care if you've been here for a day or a hundred years or eight years, however long we've been alive as a company. Things that we need to do every day. And this gets harder the longer you go. Sometimes we overcomplicate things and forget about the small, simple actions every single day 
for the goal of having new conversations. We forget about that. So what is your number of people? Type your number of people in the chat of, of your goal. I want to see, there's four pages of people in here right now. I want to see your number in the chat. What is your goal of new people you're going to reach out to or conversations that you're going to have every single day from this day forward? Mm. Oh, lots. Three, five, 10, four. Whatever number you said, double it. Brian Underwood does that all the time, guys. It's the power of one more. It's the power of one more. So simple things. Notice in the examples that I gave, time, time, notice the examples that I gave on how to talk to new people every single day to create the opportunity to ask them if they want our ketones or if they want to join our business. Notice what I did not say. What I did not say was stress, stress over the perfect post. Just post something. A little activity is better than, or messy action, messy activity is better than no activity. People need to see the real you showing up messy and all. I didn't say overthink whether you should reach out to somebody who said no before. Reach out to them. Use your voice. I also didn't say waste your time finding the perfect picture or visual to send with an invitation to a guest call. I didn't say any of that. Just do it. Just invite them. And then that is all. Don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Remember, take, heart, take a hold of what I'm about to say. If you missed it in the beginning, you cannot say the right thing to the wrong person. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person. And it is not your job to determine if somebody is the right person or not. Your job is to create the conversation and ask. The people are going to tell you whether they want to work with you or not, whether they're looking for you or not. They're going to give you a yes or a no or a maybe. And remember, a no right now doesn't mean a no forever. So release yourself of the responsibility of trying to figure out who, who's, who's my people, who should I work with? No, no, no. All you have to do is stay in activity so that you can ask the questions. Hey, have you tried ketones? Do you want them? Do you want to join my business? Right? Their answer will tell you, okay, I'm going to work with this person, or maybe I'll follow up in a week or two, right? Uh, so get real with yourselves about what you're doing every single day your activity, self-assess it, and then figure out what you're going to do going forward. All of y'all have a goal of people that you're going to speak to from this point on. Mine was five. So because I made all of us double it, I'm going to do 10. Find an accountability partner to do this with, because I can easily let myself off the hook after I talk to four. Find yourself an accountability partner and make sure before you go to bed, you say, I've talked to this many people. I have two more. I have two more. I got to go find someone, right? And then maybe you guys can give each other ideas of, of how to find new people. Uh, that is it for the training. And I want to just end on the announcements again in case you were late for the call. Yes, get an army of them. I love it. Um, flavor drop, as Tessa mentioned, uh, an action that you can do is not post and pray. You can post. It's important to post. Post to your stories. But make sure there's a call to action. And then go, if you've been here for a long time, go in your back office and find people who order Unleashed or Black Label, whatever we call it these days, and find people who used to order Tangerine Dragon and tell them it's back. Explain to maybe Green Icon customers who are not on SmartShip, so they're not VIPs, that hey, if you become a VIP, set up your smart chip, you can get this discount between 50, 15 and 50% off, right? Um, and then meet us in Dallas, August 11th. Ask your team for details about that. It's going to be the sickest playbook event ever, I know. And uh, guest call tonight, 8 p.m. Make show yo there. Thank you guys for joining me for 44 minutes um, and happy Wednesday. We'll see you tonight at 8 p.m.